Hey everybody, welcome back. We're gonna talk a little bit more about GB Studio. So let's do this, uh, let's get started. Um, if you wanna start at adamooseart.com, here you can do that and find the video game design page and then click on adamooseart.itch.io and that'll open up my page on itch and you've got the demo game there that maybe some of you have already tried out and if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see a link to GB Studio by Chris Maltby. So go ahead and click on that. And that page will pop up. And then you'll get a chance to download now. So this is free software, but you can give a donation to keep him going. And that might be something cool to do in the future. For now, we're just going to say, no thanks. Just take me to the downloads. And what you're going to want to do is figure out what you're running. Most of you are probably running a Windows machine, and if it's fairly new, it's a 64-bit. So uh, if you're not sure exactly which one to do, you'll have to kind of work that out for yourself. But there are instructions for installation down here if you have one of these other things. But for most of us, we'll just download that file, and it'll download as a zip file down here. So Itch lets you make and publish your own games and a percentage of what people pay, which is usually um, just a donation. Um, you can set it for whatever you want, but then people who sell things will send a percentage back to Itch to help them out. So we'll see how it goes right now. It's just a, a cool place for us to be able to publish the games. So we'll start on that in just a little bit. Once that downloads, then you're gonna run the installer and it's pretty straightforward you just click on it and then it will install the program files onto your computer pretty quickly it's not a big program so it shouldn't take a ton of time but sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get everything downloaded so we're gonna take a look around and see what we can do today and maybe change a few things things in it and then we'll um, go from there. So if you open up that zip file, you'll have to say extract all. It'll go to a file and open everything up. And maybe your computer will be faster than mine, but we'll see. If you open that up, GB Studio Setup, and click on that, then it'll go ahead and run the program. So you might have to click on more info and run anyway because your Windows Defender might think it's kind of sketchy, but it's not. I've had it on my machines for a long time and on several machines. It's good stuff, so let's see what happens here. So once we get everything loaded up, then we can take a look at the documents page. If you want to click on this link, the install instructions. It'll take you to gbstudio.dev and there's all the information on here about how to get started. And you can read through all of this stuff and get a whole bunch more information. But I'm gonna take you through it a little bit step by step, okay? And we'll kind of see what we can figure out about this program. So it's loading up here now and then it's going to open up and what it does it's going to ask you where you want to save your files and i suggest you know of course you could save them on your computer but i like to save them onto a usb flash drive and you don't need a huge one because the files that you're using are all pixel art and it's not a ton so something like four gigabytes is probably fine probably more space than you'll need and if you have one that's bigger than that, that'll work okay too. So you can look through all this documentation here and it'll give you kind of an idea of what this thing can do and what kinds of stuff you might want to work on. So if we click on GB Studio, They'll have recent projects that I've been working on. There's my demo. 
the new projects and it'll tell you where you want to save them. Yours might look a little bit different, um, but I'll do a new project and we're going to call this YouTube Tutorial. Or how about just you tutorial there. So that's the project name. You can choose between having a completely blank project and a sample project. I like to start with a sample project because it has some of the script already written in there and it, it just gives you a better chance to start instead of starting purely from scratch. And then you can decide where the path is. So if you click on this it will show you where you want to save it. So you could just make a folder on your desktop and then everything would be right there and it wouldn't get lost in your computer somewhere. But I'm going to keep mine where it is on my flash drive. And then we're just going to create. That's going to create a new project called U-Tutorial for us. And it's going to load in all of the normal assets that this starts with okay and so it'll start and so what we're looking at here is the game world these things are called scenes you can move those around that's like the background there's two sizes this is the smallest size it can be that's the size of the actual Game Boy screen and then this is the largest size it can be and so when you move around it'll follow your player and that's the largest size so those are the two sizes that your screen can be. Um, and then over here, there's not a ton you can do. You can add an actor, a trigger, or a scene, and we'll talk about that in a second. You can click erase to erase things, okay? And then you can click this little block, which is a collision, um, which means you can draw this red on here, which means your character is not gonna be able to pass over those parts on the scene. And then over here, this is the scripting editor. So this is where you're going to write all your uh, logic. And you don't have to actually write the code. This is all going to be visual, uh, which is really cool because I don't know anything about actually writing code. But after messing with this for a while, I've been able to kind of get my head around it a little bit and see what we can do. So let's take a look around. And let's just see um, what we can do here. So the first thing we can do is let's just add a scene, okay? So we're gonna add a scene, and when we click, it's gonna drop the scene into there. It's this cave, so we can pick over here what background we want it to be. So we can click down here and choose any of these files. These are background files. Let's make it this house one, okay? And so we'll put this house next to the other house and then we'll do something a little bit different. So we added a scene now. And, um, and then what this thing is, we can zoom in a little bit closer and see this little orange thing is called a trigger, okay? And so you can, what you can do is add a trigger and then you can make things go from place to place. So right now, when I step on this trigger in here, it does a change scene script. So it makes my person go from here into this house in here. And I'll kind of show you how that works here in a second. And then what we'll do for this tutorial is we'll change the trigger to make it go over to our new house. You can click and drag to move things around a little bit if you click outside of the scenes, okay? So um, what, let's do this. Let's run this real fast and just show you what happens. So when I click run, it's going to pull up an emulator and it's gonna actually run the project and we can get a look at what's gonna happen. And then we can play around and change a couple of things and then we'll see. Uh, what we can do. So there's a lot of different things to talk about on this program. Okay, we'll pause why this is going on here. All right, so the tutorial jumped up now.
Okay, it didn't take too much longer, but I didn't want to wait forever. You can use the keyboard to control this. So you press enter to press start, and then Z is your A button or your interact button. So you can see that big scene follows the player around, and you can talk to people. Have you seen my cat anywhere? Hmm. And then when we walk into this house, that trigger is going to go off, and now we're inside of the house. So you can wander around and try this out. When I hit that trigger, it brings me back out to here. So, and all of these things are sprites. Some of them are animated, like the duck has a couple of frames, so it goes up and down and looks like it's doing something. And then those flames there are animated sprites, so they have several frame, frames of animation, which makes them look like they're moving and that little floating thing there. Um, and then my character has a lot of frames so that she looks like she's walking around. Some things only have one frame, like the cat, they're just going to face in that direction. And then some other people have multiple frames, so if I talk to him, he turns to the side. Check out this sweet duck. Okay, So that's kind of what we're doing there. We can close that down. And so if we want to, let's just delete this trigger here. So we'll put the eraser in, and we'll delete these two triggers, and then we're going to add a trigger so that we can go to our empty house now. So I'm going to add a trigger and drag it to make it that size. And then I'm going to add an event. Okay. And so scene events can look like that. So you can kind of search. So we'll do change scene. And then we'll drag this here to wherever we want the person to enter into the room. Okay. So right there. And then we want them facing up. So that's scripting that to hit that trigger and go into here. And then we'll add another trigger to change the scene back. So we'll put this trigger back here, and then we're going to add an event, which is called scene, and then change scene. And we'll put the person back out here. And since they came going down, we'll make them facing down when they come there. Okay, so we've added that trigger, we can go in and out of our house. Okay, so let's add an actor. So we can add an actor here, and when we click, it could be a cat. Uh, let's make it a dog. Okay, so we have the dog here, and it automatically has this purple around it, which is a collider, which means you can't walk through it um, when it's showing on the screen. Okay. And you can do a couple of different things. So the easiest thing to do to show you is let's add some dialogue. Okay, So I'm going to put in dialogue and text uh, display dialogue. Okay, And that's on, in, on interact. So when I interact with this actor, it can display some text. On initial means that when it initializes at the beginning of the scene when it's loaded, then you can also make things happen on the script. Okay, but for the simplest thing, let's talk to this dog and we'll say, hey, I'm a talking dog. Whoops. <laughs> dog. Hey, I'm a talking dog. If you need to say more than that, okay, you usually have three lines, but you can add more. Hey, I'm a talking dog. How cool. And down here, you can click Add an Avatar. And so if you want like a picture next to it in case you're not sure who's talking to you, you can click that. And you can have the dog avatar there. And we'll, we'll see what that looks like in a little bit. It just puts it next to the text box. All right, so on Initia says, or on Interact, it'll say, hey, I'm a talking dog. How cool. All right, so we've got that scripted in there. Um, so that's add a scene, add an actor, add a trigger, and the avatar. So we can do uh, a couple of other things too. Uh, we can set the, pl the player sprite sheet. So there's only a couple of things. There's one NPC that walks around, and she looks a little different than this one, but not much different. I guess she has bigger hair, so we can change that. In my next video, we're going to talk about how to make our own custom sprite sheet. So let's just see what happened here to these changes that we made. And then uh, maybe we'll do one more thing. Let's do one more thing before we run it.
Okay, let's add another trigger. So we're going to add a trigger and we're going to put it here and let's do something else. Let's add a multiple choice. Okay, so display multiple choice. Okay, and we'll have this variable. This is a local variable, so it's just for this trigger. Okay, and so we'll set the true. Ooh, we have to do this. That way it's kind of interesting. We can add an event display dialog. Okay, and we'll drag that up in front of the multiple choice. So, and we'll ask a question. Uh, would you like to examine this tree tree would you like to examine this tree and then the multiple choice will set to true okay if choice a so yes and then set to false if choice b no that kind of weird. Oh, I, that's all I can do. All right, we'll just say that's weird. Okay, okay so it says, would you like to examine this tree? Set to true, yes. Set to no, that's weird, okay? And then we can add something else to it so that we ask about the variable, okay? If variable is true, okay, and that's this local zero, if variable is true, then display dialog. It's a very tall tree. Okay. And so we can do that. Okay. So let's see what happens. We could click save here and then that stuff is ready to go. Let's run the game and see what happens. All right. So I'll be back in a second after it runs. All right, here we go. So we're back to our title screen. We'll press start. Z. We're fading in. We can check things out. Let's see if this works. Okay. Would you like to examine this tree? Yes. It's a very tall tree. Would you like to examine this tree? No, that's weird. And then nothing happens. Let's walk into here. We should be in our empty room now with our dog. And we say, hey, I'm a talking dog. See the little avatar next to it? That shows you a picture of what you're talking to. How cool. All right. That is pretty cool. So that's really all I wanted to show you for getting started. Download this thing and try changing some things around in the sample project and then I'll be back with another video and we'll talk about how to make some of our own graphics and stuff and get some of those things added into there. All right, we'll see everybody later. Bye.